trapping somewhere a little bit different tonight. This is my back garden in the middle of Market Warshop in central Nottinghamshire. It's a long time since I've trapped in the garden. And with some rain in the forecast, but we don't know where or we don't know when, I've decided to stay at home and have a couple of hours in the garden trapping, see what comes in, see what we get. It's the perfect night for it. Well, the first three moths are already in at the light. Single hard and dart, a flame shoulder and a common pug. Be interesting to see what does turn up tonight, but I do actually enjoy trapping from home. One of the reasons is because I can imbibe in a drop of this stuff. But sometimes you get a different range of moths, or at least a selection of moths will be different to what a trap at Miss and Carr or Bestorp or Loudwood. There's always some species that I get here in the garden that I never trap anywhere else. And you never know what's going to turn up in an urban setting such as this. So, I'm looking forward to a nice couple of hours, hopefully rain-free, and a few moths. And maybe one or two of these. That's probably the best way to start a trapping session. Well, I don't know how many species I'll film. It depends where they settle. It's never a good background. The lighting on the camera doesn't like it, but on this brick, this small magpie shows up really well. There's two of these in now. A very common moth and you can see why it's called a small magpie if you've seen the magpie which is a much larger moth different looking but those sort of dark grey and white markings the thorax of course here is yellow with several blackish dots on it's a very attractive moth and despite its size is actually a micro moth it's one of the pyridids but it's a lovely little thing so that's one of two small magpies which have come in. Well, if you're new to moth trapping and you want something colourful, you're in luck because even if you trap in an urban garden or a suburban garden, and many people, or well, most people will, when they first start on their moth trapping journey, this is a species which you'll get probably on your first trapping session as long as it's in the warmer months of the year there are two sometimes three broods of this moth and it's an absolute beauty who could resist and not like seeing a sulfur yellow moth and the brimstone fits the bill it's very common and so will quickly turn up and quite often in numbers two i remember looking for this under the light to the street lights when i was a child hoping to catch one of these as it flew near the hawthorn hedges on the road and i reared several larvae from those catches it's an absolutely beautiful moth and a moth to enjoy despite its common nature Well, here's another nice moth which you'll probably catch for those of you just new to the hobby and this is a peppered moth at one time a day when the air used to be filled with smoke and smog a melanic form of this moth predominated urban areas that's rarely seen now at least in my experience i've only ever seen a few and certainly haven't seen one for a good number of years it's pretty much died out now there are a number of studies done on it but this is the normal form 
of the peppered moth and you can see why it derives its name from those sort of peppered like markings it's a very attractive moth and quite variable in size this one is small some are quite large especially the second brood but it's a nice one to get i always like peppered moths so we're doing quite well here or up to an hour already and we've got 22 species that have come in in that hour about eight of those species have been micro moths and the best of those has been Thyralia nana I'm sure that used to be called Cachalis nana back in the good old days of a couple of years ago but that's a nice one to get uh, Argyrestia cupricella that's another nice one and that's a moth that you will only really get in parks and gardens or your own garden the lava feeds on various conifers it's all right and being attacked by moths which is nice on the macro moth front single spectacle has not long since come in and there are now two vines rustic now vines rustic is a moth which sort of 10 years ago was most uncommon in fact it was a graded species in nottinghamshire and that meant that it was quite rare there were several grades and grade three was the lowest of them but vines rustic has done well in the last 10 years and especially in gardens will turn up quite easily uh turnip moth the very dark turnip moth dropped in i was hoping that it was a dark sawgrass because that would have been a migrant but it's just a very dark turnip moth the two are quite similar but peppered moth we've seen common marble carpet mottled pug not a pug that i get here very often small dusty wave is a nice little moth beautifully marked and very finely dusted uh, garden carpet marbled minor uh, there's been an angle shades in knocking around somewhere three brimstones and common bug and heart and dart was the moth which started it all off and as you can see one or two moths are flying around the garden and dropping in all in all it's a good night so far 22 i can't complain at that there again we are approaching june and we're getting towards the peak season for moths it all happens so quickly and goes equally as quickly like the contents of this time for a top up it's very quiet even for a midweek night just the sound of the jet taking people to foreign parts otherwise it's very very quiet which is something you don't always get here until the early hours of the morning sometimes it's just too noisy to warrant trapping here and it pays to go elsewhere but when it is quiet it is very nice nice knowing you've not got to pack up and head home you're already there well i've done a bit of research i thought i will just have a look and remind myself just how many species i've attracted and recorded in the garden and it's 540 different species of moths that's both macro moths and micro moths and the reason why i looked up how many i'd had is because i've had two more new species for the garden i really should trap in the garden more often but i would only trap with this method sitting by the light i don't want to trap just putting the trap out and leaving it can't do that because of cats cats love moths love them to play with them and love them to eat them so i would have to stay out with the trap while ever the trap was on and i'm reluctant to do that but the two new species are pale oak beauty which is a moth that i didn't think i'd get here 
The Liz and I had the first one for many years, I think about 100 years, at Lyon Water Deacon many years ago. And that's another moth which has done really well in the last 10, 15 years. It's become more widespread. Many people are now recording it at home and certainly when they're out and about, it's a moth that will turn up. So that's species 541 for the garden and species number 542 has also just dropped in and it's a micro moth. The easiest name to say is leek moth and surprisingly there are very few records for it in Nottinghamshire. The scientific name is Acrolepiopsis asectella. There you are. Something else to amuse your grandkids with. And that's just dropped in. Say, surprisingly, not a commonly recorded moth in Nottinghamshire. And another one which is just dropped in and followed that leak moth is Lucretia labella. I've had three records of this rare moth in Nottinghamshire. It seems another species no one seems to trap or at least they don't trap it very often there's only a handful of sites known for that and yet i have had three here so i'm doing very well i think the list at the moment we're on to about 37 species nearly 40 species it's a great night and it just shows you what you can get if you trap in the confines of your own garden you don't need acres and acres of glorious pristine nature reserve you can catch moths and record any insects come to that from the confines of your garden even if you've just got a patio there's always something that will turn up I've got one elephant hawk moth in so far this evening. Sometimes they can drop in one after another once it gets to a certain time of night. And I remember a couple of years ago I had seven of these drop in within about ten minutes. But always nice to see and as I'm trying to show you the kind of moths that you can get in your urban garden or your suburban garden. This is one of them and for many people it's top of the list it's an absolutely beautiful moth it really is what more could you want in a moth other than something that's olive green and various shades of pink and on the hinder wings even brighter pink some would even say cerise but that depends where you live but when you've got moths coming into the light like this it's no wonder people get addicted and hooked on moth trapping. Well, I'm on 43 species for the night. Last few species to have come in are green carpet, shuttle shaped dart, cloud and bordered brindle. Now, I don't think I've had many of those in the garden, so that's a nice one have recorded it before here because I have checked. Cabbage moth, it's another one of those moths that I get here. Rarely ever get it anywhere else when I'm out and about trapping. Uh, common wainscot has come in. A couple of bright lion brown eyes. Common carpet oak tree pug. And just looking at the old pale mottled willow. Pale oak beauty I've already mentioned. And what they used to call 20 plume moth, a lucita hexadactyla, if I remember right. I think they now call it the many plumed moth. And that's a moth that I used to get regular here when I had a honeysuckle at the bottom of the garden. But I haven't trapped it here for a number of years now, so that's a nice one to get. It's not uncommon, but it's unusual because. In a way, it doesn't have wings, and you'll see what I mean when I put the picture in. So, an excellent total for just over a couple of hours trapping. But I'm thinking of packing up now. I have a lot of videos to sort out tomorrow, or from tomorrow. 
but it's been great to have just a couple of hours sat here a couple of beers to watch the moths come in and we've got two new species for the garden and that's always a bonus oh i think a steady pack up is in order but straight into the shed rather than into the car <laughs> 